we often talk about the buoyancy force on an object. And buoyancy is really just a readout of the force that an object feels when it experiences a non-uniform pressure distribution that's generated by gravity. What buoyancy works out as is a mathematical trick that allows us to convert a vector surface integral, which is often difficult to perform, and replace that with a scalar volume integral that's usually a lot easier. Buoyancy helps us predict what objects will float, and it helps us predict the performance of hot air balloons, dirigible, submarines, scuba divers, all sorts of things whose motion in a domain is driven by the buoyancy force that it feels. Here I have some string and some ping pong balls and a couple of beakers and some water. And we're gonna use that in conjunction with this electronic scale to measure what a variety of buoyant forces are. As a starting point, let's take this beaker and put it on this scale. And if this is zeroed out, I'm gonna pour 350 grams of water into the beaker and see what the scale reads. So I poured 350 grams into the scale and the scale reads approximately 350 grams. Now the scale is measuring a force and grams are a unit of mass. And all this means is that the scale actually read 3.5 newtons and then it just uses a calibration curve to say that that's roughly equivalent to 350 grams. All right, now I'm gonna take this ping pong ball and put this into the beaker. This is approximately zeroed. And when I put this ping pong ball in the beaker, I see that it weighs a couple of grams. Now what's this scale gonna read out when I add 350 grams of water to the system? Well, it reads about 352 grams, and that's really just measuring the weight of the water plus the weight of the ping pong ball. Okay, let's think about this configuration. I have the same beaker. Now I have a ping pong ball, but this ping pong ball is held by a string. I'm gonna pour 350 grams of water into this beaker, and that's gonna be enough to float this ping pong ball at the top. What do I expect the scale to read this time? Okay, well, just like last time, I get a mass of about 352 grams, which means I'm getting a force of about 3.52 newtons. When the system started, I had two grams of mass leading to a force pulling down on this ping pong ball, and the tension in the string was holding that up, and so the, the ping pong ball was in equilibrium. Now the tension's been removed from the string, and now the mass of the ping pong ball and the mass of the water are combined to make this scale read approximately 352. Okay. How about this case? I have a beaker, it has a ping pong ball in it that's tied by a string to the bottom of the beaker. It masses about two grams. I'm gonna pour 350 grams of water into this. What do we expect that the scale's gonna read? So I want you to think about that and write that down. And meanwhile, I'm gonna play a video of a chipmunk eating food behind my house. Okay, we're back, let's give it a try. All right, I had a two gram ping pong ball, I put in 350 grams of water, and I have about 352 grams. It's true that this ping pong ball is attached to the bottom. It's true that there's tension in the string, and that tension's pulling up on the bottom. It's also true that this water is now higher up and the pressure on the bottom is larger. And these things cancel out. And in fact, if we just think of this as being a lumped capacitance, we draw a free body diagram on it, we find that the only force is the weight of the ping pong ball and the string and the water. And so of course we get 352 grams. Okay, now let's look at a different case. Now we're gonna use this ping pong ball. And rather than being filled with air, this ping pong ball has been filled with fish tank gravel just because that's denser than water. And we're going to see what happens when that gets covered with water. But first, let's see how much this weighs. So if we put this on the scale. This reads out as about 54 grams. So it's reading about 0.54 newtons. 
Now we're going to take this and we're going to put this underwater and see what the forces are. So now we have this ball suspended on this string. And remember, this masked 54 grams. We zeroed the scale. And now I'm going to pour 350 grams of water into this system. And now I want you to think about what is the reading that the scale going to have? Think about that and write it down. Meanwhile, I'm going to play a video of my playing Frisbee with my dog in the snow. Circle. Out. Good boy. Okay, we're back. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this reads about 384. So we have 350 grams of water, and we have 50 grams of ball, but we didn't get 400 grams. In fact, the net effect of this ball that's hanging down in this system seems to be about 34 grams, not 50 grams. So why is the net effect of this ball 34 grams instead of 50 grams? Well, the only way to figure that out is to figure out what is the force on an object that's submerged in liquid. And that's the thing that we need Archimedes' principle for. So if we consider quiescent fluid that's at equilibrium, an integral control volume analysis tells us that if we look at any control volume, and if we look at the pressure forces that are being applied to the surface that encases that control volume, while at the same time we consider the gravitational force that's pulling down on it, those two forces have to be in equilibrium. So that tells us that this net pressure force is equal to that gravitational force. And so anytime we have any, uh, any body of water, we know that we can look at that volume, add up all the weight of all the fluid inside, and we can say that that must be equal to the net pressure force that comes from the integral of that pressure multiplied by the net normal all the way around the surface. These two things have to be in equilibrium. And from that, that tells us that if we look at any control volume for any fluid at rest, we know both what the gravitational force is and also what the net pressure force is. Because these two things are equal, we know what the net pressure force is without ever having to do that vector surface integral. We can infer what that force must be just by understanding what the gravitational force is on the fluid inside that control volume. So the hydrostatic equation and this integral control volume analysis links what the pressure forces are on any object that's submerged in fluid and the gravitational force that is on the fluid inside. But now let's think about this control volume, this ping pong ball. The ping pong ball is spherical. It's submerged in water. It's also at equilibrium and the fluid is quiescent. So that means that the net force of pressure all the way around this object has to be balanced by the net force that is being applied to this ball. But now we actually don't know what the net force is being applied to the ball. It has a gravitational force, but there's also tension in the string. So what the hydrostatic equation tells us and what this integral control volume analysis tells us is that because the system is in equilibrium, the pressure distribution in this water is the same as it would have been if we had only water there. If we had only water there, the hydrostatic equation would tell us that this pressure all the way around the surface is balanced by the weight of the water inside. And that means we know what the net effect is of the pressure around the surface. It has to be 34 grams. What that means is that we know that this water is pushing up on this ball with 34 grams of equivalent mass, or 0.34 newtons of force. Now, we know that this ball mass is 50 grams and that there's a force of 0.5 newtons. And that means that there's a gravitational force pulling it down of 0.5 newtons, a tension in the string pulling it up of 0.16 newtons, and a force of the water, the net pressure force on the water, applying a net force of 0.34 newtons. So this is a very powerful simplification. I was able to figure out what the force was on this ping pong ball, not really knowing what the ping pong ball was, or what was inside it, or what its density was. All I need to know is how much volume it's displacing. And if the system is at equilibrium and the fluid is quiescent, that tells me what the integrated effect is of the pressure on this surface. I can get that answer by doing a volume integral of the weight that would have been generated by the water that was inside that control volume. What I didn't have to do is I didn't have to do a vector surface integral of the pressures that are varying in space on a surface with a unit normal that's changing everywhere. And so I avoid the vector surface integral, and I replace it with this scalar volume integral. 
So Archimedes' principle tells us that the buoyant force, a shorthand that we use to describe the net force caused by the pressure all over an object, this buoyant force is equal to the weight of the fluid that's been displaced by an object. In fact, anything that I submerge into this water will cause the scale to read a higher number. If I take my finger and I push it down into this system, the scale is going to read a higher number, even without my hand touching any of the sides. If I take a ping pong ball, this is now a ping pong ball stuck to a stick. It's filled with air, so the total mass of the ping pong ball is only one or two grams. But if I push down using this stick, I can cause the scales to go up by approximately 34 grams. The same thing would happen if I put this ping pong ball underneath or this ping pong ball. It has nothing to do with the mass. It has to do only with the volume of the system. And it doesn't have to do with whether what we're pushing underneath the water is denser than water or less dense than water. We're still going to get the same value because Archimedes principle tells us that the force that is on the object is proportional to the weight or is equal to the weight of the volume that it displaces. In terms of a free body diagram on the system, when I push down on this, the scale goes up by approximately 34 grams. And what that tells you is that my hand has to be pushing down with a force equal to 0.34 newtons to hold this ping pong ball under the water. So Archimedes principle is powerful because it allows us to get an answer that we would have had to get by integrating P times N hat over a control surface and instead just measure the volume. Now, it's rigorously correct only in equilibrium and only when the fluid's motionless, but it's still approximately correct when things are moving around. So that means that we can have a submarine moving underwater or a scuba diver underwater or a hot air balloon moving through the atmosphere. And as long as it's not hugely perturbing the pressures in the system, we still get a good approximation of what that force is, which means that we can study the dynamics of objects moving in submerged systems by calculating this buoyancy force using Archimedes' principle. So Archimedes' principle also helps us understand the dynamics of objects that float on top of the surface. For example, if I take this ping pong ball and put it in this beaker, it of course floats on top of the water because its density is lower than the water. What Archimedes' principle tells us is that the buoyant force it feels is equal to the weight of the water that it displaces. So this ping pong ball that weighs about two grams will sink down into the water until it's displaced about two grams worth of water. And this helps us understand how different objects float on top of surfaces. So uh, polystyrene foam, for example, has a density that's about 5% of water. So if we float it on top of water, only 5% of that volume will be underneath the water. In contrast, ice, which has about 90% of the density of water, will float such that about 90% of the volume is below the water. Similarly, if I take a boat and I have a boat floating on a surface, as I weigh it down with more and more cargo, the boat sinks down lower so that it displaces more water and therefore gets a larger buoyant force to remain in equilibrium. Okay, consider this. I have two identical containers. This one here is filled to the top with water. This one here is filled to the top with ice and water. And ice's density is only about 90% that of water. If I take these and put these on the scale, will they have the same weight or will they be different? Which one will be heavier? Think about that for a couple seconds while I play a video of a cat following surgery, chasing after a laser pointer. Okay, we're back. Let's see what these weigh. Here's the water. Water on the scale gives me about 187 and a half. Here's the water and the ice. You get about 187 and a half. And remember the density of the ice is 10% different. So we would have seen it if the density was the critical factor. So why do these two things, why is the, the container filled with material of a different density, but it has the same weight? Well, what Archimedes' principle tells us about something that's floating on a surface is that if ice is floating on a surface, it displaces water equal to its weight. The difference between these two cases is that this ice is actually floating up above the water surface. So there's actually more volume being taken up by the ice and water than was being taken up by water alone. If I take this container that's filled with water up to the top, Anytime I float anything on top of it, it will displace a weight of water that's exactly the same. And that weight of water is going to spill over the side. So what this means is that Archimedes' principle tells us anytime we have a container that's filled with fluid to the top, any material I float onto the top won't change the net weight of the system. I'll put some amount of weight on the top, water will spill over the side, and that weight won't change. 
This is actually implemented in real engineering systems. One example of this is the Falkirk wheel. And the Falkirk wheel is a boat lift that's used in Scotland to raise boats between, move boats back and forth between two different canals. And one of the reasons why it's so interesting, one of the reasons why it works well, is that it moves two different caissons that hold boats, either ranging from no boats all the way up to four different boats. And it moves these caissons up and down. As you take a big caisson and put a boat onto it, even though the boat weighs an enormous amount, if I put it onto a container that's filled to the top with water, extra water spills over the side and the net weight of the system doesn't change. And what that means is the two caissons on the Falkirk wheel are always balanced no matter what you float on top of it. And that means that the motor that's used to drive the Falkirk wheel can be actually very low power. And the total energy that's required to rotate the Falkirk wheel is actually only a very small amount of energy. So Archimedes' principle is an inevitable consequence of equilibrium in these fluid systems. It tells us that the gravitational force that pulls down on a control volume must be balanced by the integrated surface pressure force that comes from a non-uniform pressure distribution. It leads to a critical simplification, which is that instead of having to do the vector surface integral, we can just do a scalar integral over a volume. And this allows us to predict the force both at equilibrium and also near equilibrium for systems that are floating in the atmosphere, floating on the surface of water, or submerged underneath.